Hey everyone, how's it going? It is either way, Randy Chavez coming at you today with a VV Omi update video. You guys, if you're new, welcome. For not welcome back, my pack is almost better. Everyone say hello to Dashi. Hello, Dashi. Commenting, liking, and subscribing is a free way to help support the channel. Non free ways are Patreon and smashing that super thanks button down below. Uh, and then become a member, there's lots of perks. Also, uh, Steve Cannon photo up there. Uh, comment down below and ask me how you can get one. There's, I think, one left. Um, so we have a bit to go over today. We will start with the OMI. OMI on the day is down about 1%, down to 000955 at 895,000 in volume. So really not a lot. I guarantee you it looks like it's trading like a penny stock. Um, had a pretty decent dip over the last hour or a couple hours. I'm not 100% sure why. So let's go to the rest of the market. And the rest of the market over the last 24 hours is actually up. Uh, with the exception of Dogecoin, everything else is up in the top 10. But let's take a look at Bitcoin to see if it happened to have a, another recent dip as well. It had not. Um, had a tiny dip um, right over there, but nothing near as big as Akomi. Good to be, oh, I did, someone last week, one of the watch, wallet watchers had said that there was like one or two accounts that were selling big. I don't think they got liquidated. I just think a lot of, you know, there's, there's a couple of swing traders, a couple of market makers that just go and say, hey, um, let's take some profit since we were buying at 0055, 0006, 0007. Let's take our 50, 80, you know, however much percent profit. And uh, I know you want to sell that, which is fine. People are going to do what they're going to do. I'm more of a buy and hodl type of person. I've never sold a single Omi. Neither has Jeremy Padawar. He actually bought recently. Speaking of other people I bought recently, my friend Mike had bought about 20 million Omi yesterday. My uh, new whale that I've been advising has got up to 30 million now trying to get him to sell some other some of his other stuff in order to get up to the 50 million mark. I'll let you guys know if that happens. I'll keep you posted. Anywho, moving on. We do have a bit of news to go over. So VV Digital Collectible says, congrats to this week's social sweepstake winners on X, Fast Eddie, Chill Crazy, and VV Meta Mars. We enjoyed seeing everyone's physical and digital collections. Stay tuned for next week's sweepstakes. Why I really like this is because it forces people to hashtag VV, to hashtag uh, collectors at heart, you know, to tag them. And, and this is where you go and you see, oh, hey, what's this VV? Why is this trending? And to have them do that every single week, that's what, that's what shows do. Shows that premiere every week, they always want to have like a guest star in there. So it trends. It'll trend on Twitter. It'll trend on Facebook, wherever. It's like, oh, did you see this? Hashtag, like, I, the guy who plays um, in the Ahsoka series, the first two episodes came out. The guy that plays Mr. Krabs, uh, that voices him, he was on there. They did that with the, like every week, a show will have a guest star celebrity come in to play a one-off character and it gets them trending. What Vivi's doing is they're going on TikTok, they're going on YouTube across all these social media platforms and they're saying, hey guys, hashtag us, getting themselves to trend. And speaking of which, we do have Zachary Cardano. I've talked about this in live streams, but I haven't really talked about it in a video. Um, the video's apologies have not been... Uh, have not been up to up to snuff recently. I've been doing a lot of lives. I've just been, just been busy. Anyway, he goes on and he posts, he pins a post saying, there's no community like Cardano. It has it all. I spent the last few days absolutely hammering the X analytics or Twitter analytics, and there's just nothing that comes close. But strangely enough, the VV official community seems stronger than most layer one top 25 cryptos. And he mentions that again today where he says, I'm actually in awe of this community. I delved deep into Polygon, Solana, Ergo over the past few months, and none of those communities, and they're in the top 10, none of those communities compare to this. I'm still buying NFTs, and Omi is next. I remember telling my new whale, you know, getting back to Omi for a minute, like, over the last couple months, he's like, you know, Chavez, you know, I have some bit, you know, do you really believe in this Omi? And I explained it to him like 100 times. I was like, yes, I do. He's like, all right, when do you think it's going to go up? And it's like, and a few months ago, I was like, listen, you know, you, you could very well have the next six months. You could have a year before it goes up. We could be down here at these prices at 0005, 0006, you know, for several more months up until next year. It could, have, could be until the halving. I don't know when they come out with utility. I don't know when they come out with uh, when these catalysts hit. I do know when they do start to roll out, they're going to roll out one after the other. You know, at, at least one major announcement per quarter and probably one nice little announcement every month to pump it up but we have no idea when that is. And you know, when I got back from the whale week a few weeks back and suddenly we're up like, <laughs> we were up like 80% in like in a week. Um, I said, listen, if you still wanna buy here, which he's still continuing to do, I told him that's a, 
it's a good place to dollar cost average. You know, you're still getting it super cheap. Uh, I said, but remember how I said, you know, you're going to have a year at these prices or X amount of months at these prices. I told him, listen, I, I, I can't say that anymore. Like they, they've started this. This train is moving, brother. You know, get on or watch it pass you by. Anyway, um, the fact that we're ahead of many, not just top 25, like top 10 communities and and nobody knows who we are yet. I mean, we do. We trend a lot. The community is huge. But Web3 is a lot bigger than just what you see on Twitter. Yeah, a lot of people that are into Web3 have Twitter, but it's just a fraction of an amount that we have. Anywho, moving on. Um, if you were getting the uh, people like myself have been getting the, oh, hey, join the Master Collector program. And it's like, OK, what is this? If I hit join now, am I going to screw it up? Do I lose all my points? I don't know. Uh, what I did is I just X'd out of the app, I went back in, and then it, it, it just became uh, back to normal. So if you do see that, like what happened to my MCP points, just X out of the app, sign out if you want, sign back in, and then voila, Master Collector. Speaking of which, uh, I'm now currently, remember when we were getting 1,700 MCP points each day for holding 10 million OMI? Well, now for holding 10 million OMI, you are getting about 700 points each day. So you're, you know, less about a a thousand points of what we were getting, which is fine. 700 points a day is fine. Um, that'll probably get less and less as time goes on, slowly but surely. Because again, this is reward season zero. Like, this is not staking. This is just a bonus. This is just, hey, you're holding Omi. Let's let's give you something for it. Let's give you some more MCP points for it. Eventually, I could see this, because people are going to want to hold Omi anyway. They're going to want to stake it. They're going to want to get discounted fees for cash out or discounted fees in the store. Again, VV has 2.5% in the store that they could play with. Oh, you stake X amount of OMI, you'll, you only have to pay 2.2% or 2%, however much it is. And then if you go and, you know, for cash out, that's a 10%. If you stake a certain amount of OMI, they could go really, really low with it. They could go super crazy. So we'll, uh, I would love to see something where if you hold 100 million OMI, you know, it's like a 2% cash out fee or 1% cash out fee. I would love to see something like that. Because most likely, if you have 100 million OMI, you probably don't need to cash out, but you're going to do it just because you get that, you're going to get a little badge, you get a little something that says, I'm staking this much OMI, or I have this much OMI held in the app. Um, but again, that's just my opinion. I don't know if they actually do that. Um, we have Stan, who bought my who bought the shirt off my back the other day, says, will OMI create a reader like Amazon Kindle for offline use of collectibles? I don't... I. That might be on the list that they might do eventually, but currently it's it's going to be such a low priority. Even if they do do that, I don't know if they <laughs> do do. I don't know if they would. Even if it does happen, it's going to be X amount of ways away. Like for a comic book reader, oh, can we read the comic books if we, you know, even if the app is offline? I, that's something to ask them. Uh, if anyone's going to any of the live events, you know, let us know. Um, so I was talking about Disney at because there's a couple of. There's a couple of places, I think, in Islands of Adventure that are doing, hey, ride to earn. As in, you ride these rides a bunch of times, get different collectibles. And they didn't mention crypto, but Disney could do that with Vivian Omi. And I know um, that's very, very far out there. Why would they do that? I would say that they would do it because, I, I mean, let's look at it this way. David and Dan have about 30 billion OMI each, and it's still on GoChain. Like, they, they haven't moved it over. So there was there was a theory that came out on my video. It, I didn't come up with it. Somebody else did. Like, oh, if it's still on GoChain, do you think that that's part of the contract with Disney? You know, let's say Disney goes and they, I, I don't know, how, how, do you get, how do you get a license with Disney? Do they give them some OMI, OTC? Do they give them whatever? I don't know. I said, maybe that's part of the thing with Disney. They'll take such a large position in OMI and part of the contract is like they go and they have David and Dan um, keep it on GoChain or, or whatever. I, again, I don't know exactly how it worked. And again, it's just a theory. But one of the things with the rides, if you could go onto a ride, you scan a QR code, uh, a QR code of the ride beforehand, and then you scan the QR code afterwards, showing that you actually went on the ride, you completed the ride. What could you get? I mean, already you have people that. Uh, if anyone's ever been to Harry Potter World on like the main fun ride, like in the castle, um, it's amazing. And you have a picture in there. There's a big flash that goes off in the middle of it. You're in like a cave and you're able to go and buy that picture for 10 or 20 dollars. 
why wouldn't you be able to go and say, oh, hey, now that you've gone on this ride, here's a digital collectible. It could be free, it could be a dollar, it could be whatever. I'd, I'd like them to do it, I'd like them to do it for free because, you know, if it's any type of money, people are going to be like, nah, I don't need it. Um, but if it's for free, oh, I might as well do it. What is this free digital collectible? At least just to download the app. Get someone to download the app and... It's, it's like when a sports team is losing, you know, like the series, you know, let's say, let's say the World Series and they're losing, you know, the series like three to one. Okay, there's no problem. Just, you know, we'll win this game. Get, let's say it's the Cardinals. Get it back to St. Louis or it's a mess. Okay, let's, let's get it back to New York before they go. And um, I think as long as we just go and get people to download the app, that's half the battle. Once they download the app, they're, I feel like a lot of people are going to be quite smitten with it. So that's one of the things I think could happen. You go and you download a QR code. You go and get a free digital collectible on the VV app. And remember, in the most recent podcast I had with David, I asked him, hey, you have She-Hulk, Moon Knight, and the new Daredevil Born Again series. You have QR codes in there. Is there any way that um, when you scan those on the Disney Plus app, you go and get free comics in the Marvel Unlimited app? Could we do something with VV like that? And he disinclined to acquiesce my request to answer that question, but he... Uh, I think something like that happens in the future. And the reason I bring this up is because Wat Mama says, imagine getting a secret rare Buzz Lightyear for getting a high score on a laser amusement ride at Disney. Because again, they're not just rides, some are interactive. I remember one years ago, like a Men in Black thing, you shoot all the aliens, pew, pew, pew. Oh, that hurt my back. Um, that would be amazing. Like it's very similar to what happens at Pokemon Worlds events each year, where you have people go and um, you didn't win, but you got you know a quarter finalist or you got top thirty-two. There are people, there are sharks waiting in the crowds. Hey, congratulations, you won, buddy. Let me give you a hundred dollars for this card. Let me give you three hundred dollars for this card. And they they get semifinalist, they get the finalist, they get champion. Let me give you a thousand dollars for this card, buddy. You deserve it. And meanwhile, they go and they <laughs> they uh, they sell it for like five times that, ten times that. So when Wat Mammus goes and says, imagine getting a secret rare Buzz Lightyear for getting a high score on the laser amusement ride at Disney, somebody gets that, oh, cool, I got this. It doesn't matter who it is. It could be a 10-year-old, it could be a 50-year-old, a 70-year-old, anywhere in between, whoever gets that, a thousand bucks is a thousand bucks. And if that's like a one of one or a one of 10, that will go for thousands over on the, on the VV app, especially if it's something like that. So I guarantee you there, are, there will be people from the VV fam going to the parks every day, waiting for the alarm to go off. We have a new high winner. You got this free NFT? Yo, my guy, let me go and, you know, let me bless you with some bills for this redemption code that I'm going to put on my app. Um, speaking of which, speaking of people getting things, um, the gold and silver logo, which I have, I know I talk about a lot, but there's there's good reasons for it. Uh, let's take a look to see what it is right now. Um, we have on here. We've had a couple of sales recently. So it is at, I think, 4,300? 4425. Um, only 43 of them. So there's not a ton of these that are actually be people would be willing to buy. I'd say people, people would be willing to buy the two at the 4,400. The 5K, I don't know right now. I Once these two sell, I, I think some of these people up here, they might come down to like 45, 47, 4,800. I don't know if people would go and, and buy 5K right now because a lot of people aren't seeing the, the real value of it. But again, the when speaking of value, the price is what you pay. That's the amount of monetary price that it goes for. But the value is what you get. And again, that value, if, if you want just continuing utility each year, you get hundreds of dollars of years or hundreds of dollars of content uh, with that every single year when you go to these events, Golden Frankenfat, the, the Golden Monkeys, or the new Gold and Silver VV logo that they're going to give to the original uh, Golden logo holders. So you get hundreds of dollars a year just in, not, not airdrops, but things that you have to be in person to get. Cool. You get family. You get people that are just super excited to see you, and you love them, and you just want to hug them, and tackle them, and just drink and have, you know, party with them. And... You know, that's another big part of it. Not a lot of people get that. Again, the, out of the 99.1% of people that watch me, it's men, and a lot of men are fairly are fairly lonely. And, you know, this gives that sense of community. Anywho, on top of that, if that wasn't, if that wasn't enough, the network inside that, excluding Dan and David, is just 
highly successful, highly conscientious people that, again, are good people at heart, you know, collectors at heart. And they just, that's who you want to learn from. Again, I, I said this in a live the other day, but if you take the top five people, the top five people that you spend the most amount of time with in your circle, average their incomes together, that's most likely your income. What happens when you start to spend a lot of time with high net worth individuals? And okay, how do they talk? How do they uh, go and carry themselves? What, what do they, how do they live their lives? There's a decent amount of chance that as you spend more time with those people, you know, you, you're able to go and, and learn a couple things. I've already learned a bunch. But again, that's just part of the value. I think the main value with this is that, you know, Dan and David, you get to see them every year. And are they as popular as like Elon Musk? No. Or Steve Jobs was? No. But as VV becomes a household name and, and people start to go and look at David Yu interviews, again, when, when I first started getting interested in Tesla and wanted to invest with them, the first thing I did was go and watch every single interview I could with Elon Musk. You're going to get a lot of savvy investors, I mean, just like me, that are come in, they're like, okay, yeah, people are talking good about VV, but a lot of people don't have financial literacy. A lot, of, a lot of people are just kind of into the FOMO. Let me research this for myself. Let me get a look at how David responds to questions. Let me take a look at his uh, inflection in his voice when answering certain things. You could even have, you have AI go and do that. Say, okay, here's what he's saying, but what does he really mean? And they'll be like, okay, genuine person. Okay, passionate, knows what he's talking about. I got to meet this guy. Um, and since he is exceedingly busy and, and just got working like, what, 16 hours a day? like minimum, um, you know, like how, how do you get a hold of them? How do you get a meeting with them? It's going to be very hard unless you have a gold and silver VV logo. He will talk to you for free multiple times a year at all of these events. San Diego Comic-Con, New York Comic-Con. We're not yet confirmed for Designer Con. Uh, Alex had said, hey, I might go just to go, but VV officially is not there yet. Um, anyway, any of these events, you can go and talk to these people which you know should probably cost thousands or even tens of thousands of dollars, which it will eventually. People will see that, and it's going to be very similar to what like uh, what like BlackRock is doing now. It's going to be very similar to what you're seeing in the real world. Again, what we have here is going to mirror reality. And what I mean by that is you have companies like BlackRock, State Street, Vanguard, these giant corporations that have trillions in assets under management that own 88% of the S&P 500, and they get into real estate and they're swooping in. Uh, as soon as a house comes on the market, they outbid prospective home buyers. Um, they add that to their portfolio, and once they add that to their portfolio, they go and they rent it back to you at at a premium, at a huge premium. And guess what happens? You know, you wind up paying for it themselves. That it increases in their hands, and they're getting paid for it every single month. What is it going to be like with the logo? where you're able to go and see these each month. Either high net worth individuals are gonna want it just to be able to spend time with David and Dan, hedge funds are gonna get it, uh, and, and again, any financially savvy person, anyone that, I don't say any loser, but yeah, any, any loser with a couple million dollars is gonna be like, oh, I can talk to these people, like this is gonna be great, my Instagram's gonna be great, that's just great for clout. Hey, look at me, I have a picture with uh, the CEO and the COO of this multi-billion dollar company that means I must be important too. And they're gonna get it just for that. There'll be tens of thousands of dollars. But again, you have to be in person. You have to show them, hey, I have this logo in my account in order to go to these parties, in order to go to these events, in order to get that FaceTime with them. So what are they gonna do? Well, David has mentioned multiple times before the ability to rent NFTs. And I know that right now he, he's very much disincentivizing people to sell uh, the gold and silver logo, but renting the logo was conspicuously absent when when talking about his uh, him being a little bit upset for that. So anyway, um, that's what I believe is going to happen. People are going to buy these up, corporations, conglomerates, whatever, and they're they're going to rent them back to people, um, or or they'll use it for themselves after they already build that relationship with David. They can sell it for a profit or not, because anytime they need to go and talk with them, they'll go and they'll use that. Or you know they'll they'll rent it out to peeps and uh, people go do that and and maybe they won't spend you know a thousand dollars to rent it for one night right now, but they will in the future when the price of this is is thirty thousand dollars. Yeah, people spend three k. Oh, let me go to this party. I mean, you think people don't already when there are celebrities in these clubs 
that people aren't spending tens of thousands of dollars to get to the table right next to them just for a chance to get a glimpse at them, just to maybe speak to them. Again, the presidential dinners, those fundraisers, pay 35000 a plate, you are not guaranteed to talk to the president. You spend $35,000 to be there, there is no guarantee you get to talk to the president. Sometimes you do. Sometimes you get a minute and a half with the vice president and a picture, and that's it. Anyway, moving on to the rest of the news, uh, Whale Chart uh, has reported the former SEC chairman, Jake Clayton, says that a spot Bitcoin ETF is inevitable. So that is something that is going on in the macro that will help out crypto. Uh, you do have Stephen Duarte saying, couple late night pickups before bed. He's got a number, number 72 and number 82, Green Lantern and Mr. Incredible from The Incredibles. Um, the sub 100s are fantastic. All right, Disney Lorcana is a trading card game that I have seen a few people going on and posting about. And Disney Lorcana posts that our goal is for fans to be able to purchase and enjoy Disney Lorcana uh, TCG product at the suggested retail price. And we will continue to take steps to ensure a level of availability and quality that keeps the market healthy for both collectors and players. What that means is printers are going to go burr. We're going to make this money. And the collectors, you're, you're going to be screwed because this thing that you paid a certain amount of money for because you because it was scarce and very coveted we're just going to print like 8000 more of those and your investment's going to go down with these nfts they they can't do that i mean they could they would get such amazing backlash so they won't um but these are let's just say uh something like lady deadpool which we have some deadpool 3 news as well lady deadpool there's 14999 of her there's a lot um, and because she's like $5 right now, they're, they're not going to make any more of her, but they can't. That's all there will ever be, which is fine for some of the older stuff. You know, you have, I think Bucky has 8,000 of him, uh, but you have Captain America that has 28,000. Mr. Fantastic has 28,000. When you go and get to a couple of these ones like Ant-Man, Ant-Man and Wasp are Avengers, and they are, they're literally on the cover of Avengers number one, and there's 4,200 of them. Stupid scarce, in my opinion. Anywho, moving on. This is why digital collecting, it, this is the way. Monthly market polls from uh, BB Fox, or at Rootless Girl, she goes and says, this is for August 2023. The active wallets was 27,855, so we are just shy of 28,000 active wallets for the month. We've, that is including 1,027 new wallets. They are, the trades for these are, there's 156,000 trades that have happened. The, there's 17,656 buyers, 16,345 sellers. Wait, Chavez, if that's, that's equal to almost 34,000, actually it is 34,000 um, wallets. Why is there only 27,000? Well, obviously some of the buyers and sellers are the same. You buy, you sell, you do a little bit of both. Uh, the tokens minted were 93,000, which is actually a dip of 24%, but why that is is just because there happened to be more content over in July than there was August. And the amount of minters, same thing happened, 22,377 people had minted. Um, so out of the active wallets, m most of them did mint, some of them did not do that, some of them just bought off the secondary, like we did with Bezojman today. I don't know if I have it on here. Yes, I do. So the daily market volume analytics, I don't know how they did it for September 2nd already. I guess they just did it for the first half of the day. Um, said that Bezojman had gone on and purchased 61 NFTs just in the first half of today, uh, translated to about $1,100. Then we had a business that bought 31 NFTs for $1,500 and Deadly Combination bought nine NFTs for $2,800. Uh, speaking of which, we had the Tinkerbell drop today, which um, I guess when they first had gone on and advertised this, they were like, oh, Tinkerbell from the Peter Pan series. And if you do take a look at the license, it is from the Peter Pan collection. So we'll have more of him. There's obviously more characters than just these of Tinkerbell. Um, but we did not sell out. Uh, most things are going under retail. But that being said, and again, a lot of the photos were like, oh, yes, this I knew this would totally go under retail. I knew it wasn't good. Um, but then you take a look at the actual numbers and see, well, they actually still made, and this is just uh, four and a half hours, five hours later, they still made $150,000 on the drop in less than six hours. Now, is there more? Could they have, um, and the money will continue that throughout the day. Could they have made more? I, I, I don't know. Maybe if it was slightly less scarce, they could have. 
but I'm, I'm pretty happy with the company grossing $150,000 on the day. So shout out to Vivi for that. Moving on. Marauders number one, Secret Rare, is on auction right now. I was the highest bidder for a little while at $2.70. I'm going to try to buy that. It's a pretty cheap comic in general. Like, it's less than 30 gems. Um, so I might get one in general, but I'm going to try to bid on this one because it's for auction. Anyway, um, this time last year... I was at Dragon Con and I saw an Alligator Loki. Yeah, someone was cosplaying as Alligator Loki. That's not the same shirt. I have a New York shirt on, but it's, I um, thought that was fun. Um, so in today's collection, you have Phil Duong going and posting. He's got the number 421, all matching mints. That's I love it when people match their mints. It's great. Okay, here's the Deadpool stuff. Wow, it's already 25 minutes on this video. Uh, Scotty Young calls it one of the rarest and most valuable comics that I've done for a cover. One of one artwork for Marvel's What If Venom slash Deadpool number one via silent auction starts Monday, September 4th at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, only on the web app. Why is this important? Listen, there's a lot of things that we, we could tell what was coming to Marvel based on the Marvel Mighties that we get, based on some of the stuff that we get. So when it comes to this, oh, hey, it's Venom Pool. There is so many other things. Uh... Ryan Reynolds pretty much confirmed Kidpool. So one of the things that in, in the original Deadpool, um, the Deadpool core, you know how they have like the Thor core and they have like all that. So the Deadpool core consists of main 616 Deadpool. It consists of Lady Deadpool, Wanda Wilson. Uh, it consists of, who are the other ones that we have? Dogpool, which we have. But the difference is they have, instead of zombie, uh, zombie Deadpool, we have Headpool in the core uh, and then Kidpool as well. Um, and Ryan Reynolds had pretty much confirmed that Kidpool is coming over to Deadpool 3. There's going to be a lot of amazing, crazy uh, cameos with this. And they're basically just going to kill the rest of the Fox universe. Like when Deadpool and Wolverine are fighting, they're fighting in uh, that that zone that Eliath was in, uh, which is basically like the awareness. Um, they're fighting in the, for, from Loki Season 2. And you see the century, the 20th Century Fox sign in the background. So it is going to be Deadpool kills the uh, the Marvel Universe, but it's going to be the Fox Marvel Universe. You're going to have so many of these different ones. And I hope they all come uh, to the main universe during Secret Wars. I think they will. Um, that They're just going to do a soft reboot with that. But anyway, I'm super excited for that. I wonder what other NFTs we get. Um, and then somebody asked, are they going to announce any new licenses at New York Comic Con? Well, I'll tell you the reason they were able to announce new licenses at Dragon Con, not Dragon Con, at Designer Con last year was because that wasn't a official Marvel event. That's an event that VV happened to go to, independent, they could go announce whatever they want, and they did. Um, so they can announce things there. Because they're going to be at Comic-Con with Marvel, as in like a guest of Marvel at the Marvel booth, they are, I don't think they're allowed to go and post, oh, hey, we have this brand new license that isn't Disney or Marvel, and announce it there. Now, they'll announce other things, like they might announce Fidgetals, at this particular one, um, at this Comic-Con, because I think that's coming, I think that's on its way. They might announce how they're furthering their partnership with Marvel, and they'll say what that entails, but outside of that, um, I, I don't think you'll see any major licenses that are announced on there. Anywho, that is it for me. Everyone, please comment, like, and subscribe. Comments are good for the YouTube algorithm. Everyone say bye-bye to Dashi. Bye-bye, Dashi. I love you guys. Goodbye. Meow, 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 meow.